Hello, listeners. I might have lost about half of my audience because of trying to speak with whatever accent that was last time. But for those who are still here, welcome back to another episode here on Nature and Science for Kids. As I already said, I'm Moose Jaw Matt. Now it's time for the theme song. Instead of waiting to the end to say, oh, by the way, this episode was for someone's birthday, which has kind of been a recent theme, I'll tell you right now. Josiah, happy birthday. This episode's for you. There, we're done. I hope this is fantastic. I'll see you next time. Just kidding. We're only getting started. The question, though, that I have for myself is, what would Josiah want to hear about? What do you want to hear about chickens? Hmm, check. We've already done that. What do you want to hear about Komodo dragons? Check. We've talked about that. Rattlesnakes? Yeah. Cats? Mm-hmm. Dogs? Yep. Horses? Yeah. Or fish? Yeah. Yes, sir. You betcha. Josiah, I'm going to, for you, share a story from last month. Our family was in Colorado... And there were multiple reasons for it. One is because of the Rocky Mountains. Two is also because of the Rocky Mountains. And three is because of the Rocky Mountains. Also, I did want to run a half a marathon. And I thought that if I ran out in Colorado, it would be beautiful. And this story is from that time. We were in Rocky Mountain National Park, and we were loving our time out there. The weather was beautiful. It could be chilly in the morning, and yet sunny and warm in the afternoon. One morning, however, it was colder than the rest. We thought, maybe it'll warm up like it has the other days. So we went up into the mountains, and we started to walk. And just driving there was gorgeous. Our first time up was in a bus, and it had these large front flat windshields. And I recall finally looking out the front of the windshields as we drove up, winding around back and forth through the valley. And I caught a glimpse, finally, of these beautiful golden yellow aspen leaves. Aspens, when they turn colors, their leaves change colors, it goes not to red, but to yellow, bright, vibrant yellow. And they grow in groves, like families. And so you'll see these large patches of yellow surrounded by coniferous evergreens. And it's stunning. You have green, you have gray, you have bright yellow and the blue sky, and it all mixes together. It's so pleasing to look at. Through the windshield, I saw patches of yellow and these mm, rocky mountain slopes that tapered down into a valley before you, so large and so grand. And up in the distance was this probably glacier-carved, jagged set of peaks. It was beautiful. Almost more than you can take in. And I said, stop, let's stop and take pictures. But the bus driver, first of all, probably didn't hear me. And even if he had, he would not have because he has to drive the route. But I wanted to stop and take pictures. Nonetheless, we finally got to our destination, stopped and took pictures. But we were hiking up to lakes. Not one, not two, but possibly three lakes. We started on our hike and it was a fine day. But you know, Edmund is very perceptive, and he noticed some clouds. And they did look a little stormy, but we looked at our apps, and it didn't really show much should be happening. Just some clouds, nothing serious. However, in the mountains, the weather is determined by the height of the peaks. You might have 
perfectly clear skies all around the mountains. But when you're in the mountains, it creates its own climate, its own weather patterns. And these mountains started to live up to their reputation as being volatile or unpredictable at best. We were hiking in and came to the first lake. It was called Nymph Lake, and it was lovely. But we kept hiking because the next lake was called Dream Lake. And you can imagine with a name like that, that it is like a dream. It's beautiful. The water is lovely. And you have these majestic peaks reflecting off the water in front of you and more glorious views of the valley and trees behind you, aspen and evergreens, deciduous trees and coniferous trees and rocks all around. We wanted to go to one more lake, however. My wife wanted to go to Lake Hayaha. That is so fun to say. It takes a couple times. Hayaha. Hayaha. Lake Hayaha. And once you get it, it's just fun and you go with it. We were hiking to Lake Hayaha and we were going to have a great time at Lake Hayaha and take lots of pictures at Lake Hayaha. But the problem about going to Lake Hayaha that day was that the clouds mounted up more and more. And then we started to hear thunder. And then it started to rain. And Edmund said, I want to go back. And I thought, I really want to go because my wife, she would really like to see this lake. And I proposed, what if we go a little farther? And she said, it'll make the family nervous. Let's go back. And you know what? She was right. It is better not to push on ahead, but to turn around and go back if there's weather you're not ready for. So we turned around and we started to walk down. I was disappointed, not for myself, but for my wife. I wanted her to experience that, but you know what? She had no problem. She was committed to turning around and going back. And she was okay with it. She might have been disappointed, but she didn't show it. And so we started to walk back. The thunder picked up. The rain didn't intensify too much, but it did a little bit, and in fact, it started to snow. And since that time, I've been listening to a podcast episode with Edmund, and it's filled with experiences where people barely survive. And often, it's because they don't turn around when there's a storm or things like that. They push a little bit more or a little bit farther. And a safe situation can become very unsafe quickly in the wilderness by simply wanting to go just a little farther than you should. And I'm really glad, looking back on the situation, that we decided as a family to turn around and walk back down the mountain, even though there was more we wanted to see. So we walked and we walked, and the ice and the hail or the sleet or whatever it was, some wintry mix was coming down, and we took our time. And sometimes I held a girl, sometimes I held the boy's hand. We made it down the mountain. We made it and we were safe. We got in the vehicle, we warmed up, and we looked back on that experience and we had a nice time and some amazing pictures came from that. I'm gonna share some on Facebook for you so you can see them. But it was safe and that's what matters. Sometimes in life you want something different, you want something more, but wait, pause, this, nice experience could become very unsafe, could even become deadly, especially in the wilderness, if we push too far too much and we don't stay within the boundaries of safety considering the weather. That is very true, of course, of being in the wilderness, but life in general has certain situations where it's worth it to stop, think about where we are, how far we've come, What might happen next? Is it time to change plans? Is it time to be willing to let go of something I wanted to do for the sake of being safer? And I think in those situations, you use your brain, think through the options, and also pray and let the Holy Spirit guide you because each situation in life is gonna be different. And even what one person does that might be best for one person might be very different for someone else. But it's worth it to slow down, think through your options, and pray. And I'm glad we turned around and went down the mountain 
Maybe there's a situation in your life right now where it's worth it for you to stop and think, is this really what I want to do? Is this most important or is it time to make a different decision? So Josiah, there you go. There's a story about being in the mountains and a lesson that I learned from it. And I hope you can too. And as I look down right now, no joke, there's a ladybug trying to swim in the water dish of my cats. I'm going to rescue it and let it go free outside. Listeners, I'm Moose Jaw Matt. Until next time, and after I've saved this ladybug, keep exploring your world.